What's up, y'all? Welcome back. It's your boy, D-Friend. We're back in the building for another episode of the D-Friend Show, episode number 32. Before we get into everything that we got to discuss today, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications so that every single time that I post. Before we get into everything, man, let's get to the intro. So, today we got Boosie. The biggest topic of the day is Boosie, his Breakfast Club interview, what they spoke about, his reasoning, and did he come out a better person? We also have Shakari Richardson News. I want to touch on that because with that whole topic and that whole discussion, there's a deeper conversation I want to have as far as women's sports. And this is just my opinion. This isn't like uh, I believe everybody feels the way, but this is my opinion when it comes to women's sports and the the growth of women's sports in the future. And we also got Drake and Kanye. Kanye did leak Drake's address. We're going to speak about that for a brief moment, probably towards the end of the show. But before we get into, into any – oh, also we got Fresh and Fit breaking. Fresh and Fit breaking. I forgot about that. It's some wild shit, and we're going to talk about that as well. But before we get into all the negativity, before we get on to the best stuff, I want to salute Moneybag Yo. This thing came out, highest selling hip-hop albums released in 2021. Moneybag Yo sits at the top with 777,000. Also on the list are somebody like J. Cole, Pooh Shiesty, Polo G, Rod Wave, Doja Cat, Baby and Dirk, Lil TJ, Slime Language 2, and DJ Khaled. The reason I want to salute Moneybag Yo is because at one point in time, I used to write him off. I used to say that Moneybag Yo was nothing but a cheap Kevin Gates wannabe. I don't even know. They don't even sound the same, but there was something about Moneybag Yo that gave me Kevin Gates vibes. And at the time, I believe when I when I first really heard about Moneybag Yo, Kevin Gates was doing his time in prison. So I felt like, you know, he was trying to fill that void of a Kevin Gates. Now that he's fully flourished and whatever he is, their sounds are two totally, completely different things. But I like to salute that because at one point I was counting them out. I don't know if everybody else was counting them up, but the amount of growth in the level of success he's had, I don't think anybody's seen that level of success in Moneybag Yo. I could be wrong, but I don't think so because I don't know his age, but I feel like he gets put out of the category a lot for the newer artists that are at the top, i.e. Lil Baby, i.e. Uh, Roddy, I don't even know if I'm using i.e., right? But Roddy Rich is the Lil Dirks. Like, he doesn't get put in these conversations with these people, but I feel like even after looking at this list, he has firmly placed himself in that conversation because look at it, he's outselling a rapper like J. Cole. I don't know if he dropped before J. Cole or if he dropped after J. Cole, but just the fact that Moneybag Yo is in the conversation of highest selling albums with a rapper like J. Cole tells you where his position is at in the game currently. So I got to say, currently, not all the time. I didn't say he better than J. Cole or nothing like that. But currently, his position in the game is pretty much solidified in that respect. So, first things first, Boosie on The Breakfast Club this morning. So I expected this shit was going to go viral. It's a, it's, a, it's a major talking point. We're waiting for something. Like, look, look how bored social media. We're watching motherfuckers fall around on crates. There's nothing to talk about. Nothing's going on. Most people in that world where you would really be talking about Boosie, they don't care about the Taliban and they don't care about Afghanistan. So that ain't going to be the talking point. Black Twitter's talking point is not going to be Afghanistan. I don't know why. It's just not. Boosie is now the talking point. The crate shit was cool over the weekend, but now Boosie dropped, or uh, well, he didn't drop, but the Bears Club dropped their interview with him. And that is a new talking point. So. As I've stated plenty of times over and over again, I believe that Boosie's stance on Lil Nas X is, you know, is not a solid one. Only because he threatened to go up there and beat him up. I was like, eh, I get it. Because the way he broke it. See, look, the, when you want to have discussion like this, there are better place for places like podcasts or long form shows where you can really draw out your thoughts. Because when Boosie explained why he said he would drag Lil Nas X off the stage, he said in his statement, but I didn't. I don't know why in my on my part I didn't take it as that way. If if I see this person na dancing naked in front of my kids, I don't necessarily also. Uh, well, actually, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really backtracking my point. I wouldn't go up there and beat him up. I would just shield my kids and walk away. I wouldn't feel the need for violence on that person on stage. So they brought that up, and Charlemagne kind of. I don't say he stole my point. I don't think anybody heard my point. They stole it. But he went with the point that I was going with, which is why are we so adamantly going against Lil Nas X when street rappers for years and years have promoted other very harmful things that we really do see in real time society. We look at crime rates. And I know poverty is the reason for crime and this and that. But even Boosie said in his interview, he realized how influential he was when he got out of jail and most of his fans were either in prison or dead. So he knows the power of his tongue 
on his fans. He knows the power of his musical influence and what he raps about on his fans. He says it in the interview. So this is Charlamagne the God kind of reiterating uh, my point about street rappers and Lil Nas X. No, I'm just saying it's hypocritical for street rappers to point at another rapper and say they being negative well, for how they put their lifestyle because that happened to us so much. Because all this wouldn't be going on when Pac and Biggie was here. Come on, let's keep it. No, they used to get, they used to get, you but know. I don't, I don't, I don't know what speaking up. If Pac was here, he would have said something. I doubt it. Yes, he would have. Well, we don't Pac know. Pac would have said something. And you know the great thing about somebody like Boosie is like, you can, you can disagree with his points, right? Like, I disagree with a lot of his points. A lot of things he say, I disagree with. But when you got motherfuckers who just so damn funny, it's like hard to really, and I, I would never say I'm mad at anybody. When I talk about people on this channel, it's not that I'm angry with them. I hate them. And I ain't like them people on Twitter. I don't hate this brother. He's probably, and I always kind of like try to reel this back in. These people are probably great people, personal to personal. But if we're just speaking about ideas, some of the ideas are a little bit dumb. Some of the ideas are a little bit hypocritical. You could say Lil Nas X is bad for children and they're bad for this and they're bad for that, which I could agree with because I say all the time, I don't think he should be doing the vulgar shit because his audience is catered towards kids. But there's a way to say it that won't come off the wrong way. I could say, and people even, my statement towards Lil Nas X, people will make it seem like I'm being homophobic because I'm saying that. No, he's targeted towards kids. I don't care what he says. I don't care what you say. His fan base is targeted towards children, even if he doesn't believe so. Adults ain't out here jamming Lil Nas X like crazy. It's the children. That's the way I would uh, put Lil Nas X in a box or just have a criticism about him. Because I've had plenty of conversations, even on the podcast, Absolutely Unsure, with my friends. We had a whole segment on what is more detrimental to the black community, street culture or the gay agenda? I lean on the side of I feel like the street, street culture and the street influence is more detrimental than the gay agenda. But some people say the gay agenda. I don't have a conversation with having a conversation with you and talking back and forth, right? But the thing about the Breakfast Club interview with Lil Boosie that I didn't like was that they discussed the, the issues, right? They discussed how he felt about Lil Nas X. He continually brought up how he has a gay assistant, he has a gay cousin, I don't hate gay people, I just don't like the agenda. And people who believe what Boosie believes, right? This, I'm going to get to why I didn't really like the interview, but I'm going to say this part first. And I know... I say this all the time, but I know race and sexuality are two different things in a lot of people's eyes. But the way that you speak about a certain individual, whatever characteristics you choose to pick to speak about them, whether it be their religion, just insert that, his rhetoric that he says, with whatever you are and see if you feel comfortable with that rhetoric, right? Replace gay with black and see how you like that rhetoric being spoken. Just a lot, just that's how I look at it. Replace it with that and see how you like how that sounds. And say, instead of saying, I don't like the way that uh, gay people are pushed in media on TV, replace it with, I don't like how black people are being pushed and perceived in media. Not to say, I don't like that they're putting uh, like the stereotypical, like lowest form of whatever you consider black is. Not, not like that. I'm just saying black people on TV in general. That's the way white people used to be. Why, why are we promoting? Like, just that's how I say it. Look at it in that context and then try to reframe what you, what you think or reframe what you say. And also, we all know it'd be contradictory because we, I only got to bring up the, the kid and the adult and the, your 11 or 12-year-old allegedly being, you know, sucked off by an, an, an adult prostitute. Like, that's like another level, especially when you're, when you're rallying around the cry of protect the kids. That's just, you can't really stand, you don't have that leg to stand on when you're doing X, Y, Z. But I also realize everybody's going to do their own thing. That's what I didn't like about this interview. Instead of just letting Boosie get his point across, whether it be right or wrong and having an actual discussion, it felt like they was trying to change and mold him into a different perspective. A guy like Boosie, you're not going to change his mind on how he feels. You might give him a little bit of tidbit information. He might be like, okay, maybe next time I speak on this, maybe I'll say it like this because I know that people will misconstrue it like this, so I'll, I'll kind of clean up and polish my message. But the way that they just kept circling back to it, it's like, bro, the first 20 minutes, y'all already hit all the gay points. You hit the little Nas X thing. You did this, you did that. Then, okay, hey, 
bring, bring Flame Marone. Let her talk about the gay. It's like, is this interview going to be the whole thing about the gay? Do we have anything coming up? Do we got an album dropping? He barely mentioned Boosie Badge. He barely mentioned his TV documentary that coming out. Like, Boosie is an entertaining person. We could talk about his faults in the beginning. We can kind of have a conversation about that and how it's detrimental. But eventually, can we get on to some other, probably possibly more entertaining conversation? But they kept wheeling it around back to that. I don't know why, but that's the way that they wanted to conduct the interview. And also, and also, I, I know why. The Breakfast Club gets in a lot of shit, right? So when it comes to certain issues like this, LGBTQ, Black Lives Matter, any like these mainstream uh, social issues, they have to make sure that they don't allow their platform to be used to spread hate. Look, the last, not the last time, but maybe like the second or third to last time Lil Duval was on, they, on, on their show. And Lil Duval says, I don't know if he says something about transgender people. He says something about somebody. Some community got offended and then they went crazy. They were trying to cancel the Breakfast Club. It was, it was like a shit show. So now every time they bring somebody on there, they have to really press it in their head that these are the views of this person. Look, we're good. We're trying to coach this person in that way. That's how it looked. That's how the interview as a whole looks. It looks like, hey, Boosie, we're going to bring you on here. But we're not going to allow you to continually push your narrative on the gay agenda. We're going to stand down on you to let the people outside know we really ain't with that shit. Rather just, hey, why you feel that way? Damn, that's not really a, you know, you, you should probably should have did this, probably should have that. And he's like, you know, but I still feel, I, I respect that as a parent. If You know, if you don't want your kids to be gay, like I can't force you to want your kids to be gay. But some of the rhetoric you use can be misconstrued. Maybe instead of saying this, you should say this. And then you just move the conversation along that way. So some of the tweets that came out of him, they were kind of like parallel people. There are people that agree with Boosie. There are people that disagree with Boosie. These are two of the first tweets that I've seen um when i hit the quote tweets of the interview so one person said the way the rap industry upholds homophobia is so anti-black boosie is garbage as is platforming him which pretty much are saying that rap protects people who are against gay people right they allow the rhetoric to fly crazy when it comes to gay people so in some way that's anti-black i guess the point being is that there are black gay people so being anti-gay is in turn being anti-black, I mean, hey, Twitter, it's too many anti's, it's too many words, I get confused. Anyways, then they say Boosie is garbage, which is saying he's trash, I mean, I ain't got to really explain that, and his platform. So not only is he shit on Boosie, he's now saying that Boosie should not allow, be allowed to have a platform to say what he is saying, which is the same way y'all got Donald Trump. By trying to push down people and push down ideas away instead of combating certain ideas and just pushing people off to the dark corners of the internet, that's where you breed, you know, the white supremacist type. That's where you breed the incel type. And so instead of educating, and maybe he would come to an understanding with you at some point, maybe, it could be a long shot, maybe Boosie never comes to an understanding with the breakfast, maybe he just always stuck in his ways, but at least you tried to have that conversation. You're not trying to shun him away from society. The other person said, the Buffs Cub ain't shit. They over here trying to change Boosie mind, and he like, nah. So, that's the thing. I don't think he should change his mind. Just inform him on possibly better ways to spread how he feels about it. Instead of just, you know, like he said, oh, I'm going to beat his ass. Could you be spread the violence to gay people? Potentially he could. Because if he's well aware enough to know that his music had a lot of his fans going to jail or being or dying, he could be aware that his voice and his words against gay people can be viewed in another way as well. That's that's really all I got. I'm trying to be more understanding of people. Even though their ideas are wrong. You just gotta kinda understand where people are raised, where they come from, what they what they, what, what what they what they were raised like. Like if Boosie was raised this way, that's just the way that he was raised. Now, like I said, I don't think that the gay agenda is more detrimental than the street agenda. Some people say that they're both de super detrimental. I just don't see the overwhelmingly gay thing taking hold. Now, maybe it'll take hold in a couple of years. It'll be a whole different thing. Maybe. Who knows? But the street thing is very prevalent. The thing that the only way to get on in entertainment is to be street is very prevalent. I watched the 6 9 documentary on Hulu the other day. He knew that was the way to get on. 
if you watch him from the beginning to when he went to jail for the little child indecent thing to when he got out and the guy he framed it so perfectly once he got out for the child you know the child thing before he was using sex right he was fake having girls give him head not too much gang shit you know in this thing not to move tough. like the lyrics were still kind of tough the lyrics were still a little bit street but the imagery wasn't that yet it was girls oh i got girls she got a thong on she doing this she doing that as soon as he got out and the judge said you can't be putting out sexually explicit content over the internet that's when he dove straight into the street shit i got the bloods with me i got the red bandana i got this i got that and that's what breeds those type of people and that is the belief that the only way you can become successful or be real or be a stand-up guy or be a real man is to be a street guy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, what am I saying? I don't look down about anybody that lived that life when they actually are bred and built into that life. If you really, really come from poverty and you really, really had to do what you had to do, I understand. I don't approve, but I understand. But people who probably didn't have to do that, people who just got in it to fit in, people just felt, you know, I need a little bit of protection, so I'm going to just go full on crash dummy. I don't get that portion of it. But anyways, we're moving on to Fresh and Fit. So something wild shit happened to Fresh and Fit yesterday, right? So I was just on YouTube randomly, and now my algorithm is all screwed with manosphere stuff and fresh and fit and abba and preach and uh, like everything going on with this drama my youtube is now within that so i seen the thing saying explaining the break-in right so i guess they had a break-in at their studio from this guy that used to be a former business partner or co-host i don't know something like that so i'm playing the co-host clip which is crazy but right now I'm gonna play a scene from the breaking. Take a look. Yo, Fresh, get away from this nigga, man. This nigga gonna ruin your life, dog. Uh huh. Real shit, Fresh. Get away from this nigga. This nigga gonna pull you down, nigga. You better than this, bro. Chris, all y'all niggas is better than this. Uh huh. All y'all niggas is better than this. Why you come to this house, bro? Why you come to my house, bro? You better than this. Why are you coming to my house, bro? You understand bro? what I'm saying? Because you's a bitch. You've been oh, running, okay. You've been yep. running and avoiding me, nigga, so I brought it to you. Bro, no one is scared of you. No one is scared of you. You, you nigga, you you're not a cloud chaser. You're a cloud chaser. Chasing bum, I'm bro. Chasing, you're nigga. a cloud chasing bum. Because you running your mouth and I you're check you, nigga. You're a cloud chasing You ain't checking nobody. Nigga, everything about Get you. Get the fuck out of here, bro. bro. Ain't nobody you scared of you. Back? You're what a you bum. Got? You're what broke. You got? Look at you. What you got? You're committing a crime what you right got? now. You're what a you bum, bro. Jack, you're a bum. And you know what? It is worth you're a fucking it's bum. Worth it. It's worth it to prove to the world okay. that you ain't nothing. All right, step aside and let's see you prove to the world. already did, Step aside, prove to the world. Stop trying to incriminate me. Step aside. Step aside, bro. You already broke in. You already broke in. Exactly. Yeah. Don't defend your house. You okay? The Come on in. House. Come on in. It's gonna be the last time you live. Don't Come on in right last now. Last time I live. Yep. You Come in, in my life, bro. You Come in right now. Life. Come in right now, bro. You Come in right now. You threatening my life right now. You threatening my life right now. Y'all see how much of a coward this motherfucker exactly. is. He yeah, won't exactly. even defend his home. Exactly. He won't even defend you his home. You ain't coming in, though. You're not Yo, you ain't coming in, are you? Yo, Mario. You ain't coming in, are you? I already came in several times. Fuck out of here, you bro. You can't win this with your lying ass tongue. Yeah. Exactly. You can't win this with your lying ass tongue. You, you're not even coming in. Because you already know. You're doing this for the internet, bro. You're a bum. You're doing this for the internet. Ain't nobody said it was going on the internet. Ain't nobody said nothing to you. I said nothing to you on the internet. It is what it is. You're a loser, bro. We documented this for my protection. I should have known it. So let me tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have problems. I initially saw this and was like, this is fake, right? I initially thought that this was fake because the one thing with media is redirection. How do we redirect to another location? How do we redirect to another story? How do we re redirect my image into maybe of a villain to a victim? That's the quickest way to get people off your back. So Fresh and Fit is obviously going through their shit. So I was like, maybe this is... A little bit of deception. Maybe this is a little bit of the art of the sleight of hand. We're going to be so distracted from the allegations that now we're gonna be like, damn, there's people breaking in the fresh and fit crib. Damn, that's some whole ass shit. Initially, when I, I saw it, I was like, eh. And this was like, I had to check my bias, you know, because like when you read all the allegations, you get caught up in all the stories, you start to look at a person a certain way, right? And I had to realize, like, I don't really know these guys, right? I don't know Myron. I don't know Fresh. I know their internet personalities. And my thing with these guys is I feel like they have gotten to the point where 
possibly, even like I spoke about earlier with the Takashi Six Nine thing, their internet personalities have warped and taken over their entire life, right? So who they are off screen, because a lot of people are different on screen than off screen. If you were to listen to, because I watch documentaries about greats. I don't care if you like the greats or not, right? So when I'm doing this podcast thing, I just correlate to radio and mass audiences. So when I watch a documentary about Rush Limbaugh and his rise to fame, a lot of people will tell you that his on-air personality of brash, bravado, confidence, whatever, is on air. But off air, quiet, meek, gentle, like just a nice guy off the screen. But when you're on, you got to be on because you're entertaining people. You want to be with that. You want to be wild. You want to be crazy. But I feel like for them, maybe they're over they're, they're, they're off their online personalities may be dwarfed and warped into their real life personalities. So I was kind of, you know, trying not to judge too much, even though I could still judge the DMs to Anaquin Fitness. I think that's disgusting. To use what you have to get sex from a woman, it's a little nasty, right? It's a little, it's a little weird. And I caught myself because I was re-watching what I said, and I was comparing it to Harvey Weinstein. And I was just trying to, is that comparable to Harvey Weinstein? Like, he has a product, right, that the girls don't really need to be on. Even though I think it's still disgusting, is that a Harvey Weinstein-esque level? Because Harvey Weinstein is the power brokers of this thing. He is a gatekeeper. Myron isn't a gatekeeper for you two, right? He may be a gatekeeper of the... Manosphere, whatever the fuck that is, he might be a gatekeeper for that, but he's not a gatekeeper of the internet. He can't make or break your internet career, your internet stardom, maybe with his niche audience and the guys that follow him, but not the overall internet. Harvey Weinstein, he can pretty much get you blackballed from any studio, I'm sure. That's how powerful the Weinstein company is. Just watch when you watch a movie and that little the Weinstein company comes up. That's Harvey. Still disgusting, but I don't think I want to compare what he was doing to Harvey Weinstein. I don't want to do it. It's still nasty. If I had a little SVU uh, sound, but I dun dun, it still sound like that, but I don't want to call him a Harvey. But anyways, my point is, I had to catch my bias because when he was like, I'm going to kill you, I was like, come on, dog, that's some bitch shit. He pulled up to your crib, fight him. But I was, then I had to think. If I'm in here doing a podcast live and I have a former associate, Bust down my door. Do I have to fight this guy? No, I could just shoot him. It'll look away on the internet. But then I had to really like, you know, he I mean, he can. Like, he could just shoot him. He doesn't need to fight him. He doesn't have to fight him. It doesn't make him any less of a man. This guy literally broke into my house. It'd be different if I was downstairs in the lobby and we started having an altercation and we fight that way. But when someone comes to your door to break it down, you can't really tell what their intentions are by breaking down that door. You don't. You don't really know what the intentions are. So I just had to check my bias real quick when it came to that situation. But I did go over to the guy because I was like, who is this guy breaking into the apartment? Who is he? So I went over to his page and he had a 50 minute video pertaining to everything that went on with him. Fresh and fit. He feels like he kind of built them up, helped them go along the way. They couldn't get any girls to come on the show. So he was facilitating the girls onto the show. Things of that nature, right? He gave them ideas. Hey, you should, guys should do this. Will you guys do interviews with other people? Yeah, those get views. That's cool. But I think you guys should start bringing women on. He pretty much is taking the credit for creating the most popular things on their show. The kick out cam, all the stuff. He's taking credit for things like that. So I'm going to play the clip of him kind of dropping a bombshell as well on how Myron, which is another slimy, this is another slimy move if, if true, Actually, he kind of he kind of admitted that is true, of how he talks shit about his competitors in the manosphere, in the big OG, Kevin Sam. Almost every guest that they've had come on the show, they've talking shit before and after. You know what I'm saying? I have no pro- I have no pro- problem getting into this. Let's open this motherfucking can of worms, motherfucker, because I stand by everything that I say. We can talk about it. 
fucking uh, the amount of shit that, that that was said about fucking Kevin Samuels, bro, it, unfucking believable. Because Myron is fucking on this motherfucker's balls. He's dying for fucking Kevin to come and make another appearance on the damn podcast, and he's over here kissing this motherfucker's ass left and right. Uh, Kevin Samuels was calling in and saying, "Listen, you guys can't fucking um, um, you guys can't air the show at the same time that my show, show was going on. It's a conflict of interest. We got to make sure that we keep our time slots separate." And then Myron is accommodating him, but at the same time he's kicking and cussing up a storm. Yo, fuck this fucking. He think he is to tell us when to go on and blah blah blah. And it's like, yeah. You know, I can't wait till I get more subs. Or it, we exactly, get more subs, so we don't need this exactly, nigga no more. Exactly. Say, fuck it, him. Right. Exactly. Because I'm trying to be because, the I'm trying to be the voice of reason here. Where's all this coming right? from? Right. I'm trying to be the voice of reason. I'm like, listen. You know, let, let's let's be realistic here. Kevin Samuels is the hottest thing smoking. So you need to go ahead and accommodate him, have some respect for the Godfather, and you know, you, you, you work it out. Yeah, why and, can't it just be a... Right, uh, and, and, and this guy's response is, I can't wait until we have so many subs that we don't even fucking need him. Well, it's like, hold on, where's the integrity? If that's the case, then just do it on your own, don't need him now. Because he's the first person to say, I'm not giving no fucking free clout. I'm not helping this person, I'm not helping that person. Why what, talk shit behind right, somebody's right, back? Right, right. When, when I said let's bring girls on the show, you know what his, his first rebuttal for that is? Fuck these bitches, I'm not giving these bitches no fucking platform. That's what he said to me. He said, I'm not bringing no fucking bitches on here and giving these bitches no spotlight. Fuck that. No free clout. So, that um, whole thing could be looked at as alleged, maybe not true. But I ain't gonna lie. The way he said the thing at the end, fuck the bitches. I ain't giving them no clout. That sound like some shit that Myron. That sound like how he talked. Right? He's, that's how he sounds and that's how he talks. So, I said yesterday, if Fresh and Fit, I believe I said this, but I know I thought it, were to lose the support or be talked about in a negative light by somebody like Kevin Samuels, that would be the nail in the coffin. That would be Congratulations, you played yourself. Because Kevin Samuels, like this guy said, is the godfather of that room. Fresh and Fit might be great. They get six, 7,000 people to view, depending on what the discussion is. Kevin Samuels be pulling like 25, 30,000 people a night when he dropped. He's on another level of like fame and virality. Everything he do goes stupid, go 300,000 views, 400,000 views, talking to whoever, talking about whatever. Like that guy's on another level. He's mainstream. Fresh and Fit aren't mainstream. Fresh and Fit are still in the YouTube realm. They're famous, popular viral on youtube but they're not famous viral in the real world like someone like a kevin samuels and when i say that i'm just speaking to moments on their show like they might go viral like you say they go viral on tiktok or whatever but like when you just look at the circulation of social media you look at the biggest blogs especially like in the black community you say academics you say it was shade room like these big blogs that are out there kevin samuels circulates on those platforms pretty regularly he causes conversation about whatever pretty regularly. They not so much. I don't really see them posted like that all over Instagram for viral clips. So if, this is another layer to their allegations that in no way look good for them. And Myron did confirm that he does do this. He said that, yeah, some, I do put stuff in the group message. I look at the numbers. I do this. I, I try to rally the troops. I try to get the guys to, you know, Get motivated. Get inspired. He didn't say that he said things like this. Kevin Samuels letting him know, hey, we both similar content. Let's try to space out our times so we're not overlapping and we're not stealing each other's audience, right? Because I would think, depending on what the topic is, a lot of the people might go to Kevin Samuels just because I'm looking at his numbers. I don't know for sure, but a guy's pulling at 25, 30 a night to these guys pulling maybe like seven to eight, I would assume most people are going over there to flock to watch Kevin Samuels. That's why I assume. So that makes sense. But for him to be, I can't wait till I get subs so I don't got to fuck with him no more. It seems like slimy. It seems like a snake. And honestly, if you watch the breaking video and you see that guy tell Fresh just get away from him, it looks like a lot of the heat, a lot of the hate, a lot of the scandal is going down on Myron. People just get it fresh because, you know, so he just look, it just looked like, nah, I don't believe you some of your stories. Like that, whatever, you put out stories, people don't believe them, that's whatever. But I feel like a lot of the scandal, the, the pay for play, which is the sex for the show, the, the backstab and the talking behind people's back, this and that, that all falls on Myron. So 
tonight they are dropping a video where they're doing a q a they say they got receipts they got this they got that so their side will be told and I, i'm probably cover whatever they say because there are always two sides to the story and at this moment the other side has a lot of damning evidence and a lot of damning stories that make it look really bad for the guys over there at Fresh and Fit. So I'm about to get into the sports talk real quick. Let's get into Shikari, right? Shikari Richardson gets dusted. Ain't no other way to put it, right? She gets dusted. She went out there. It was hyped up race. She going against the Jamaicans. She's supposed to be in the Olympics. This is the race to see how the Olympics would have went down if she was there. She would have won. She would have this. She would have that. Instead, I ain't going to lie. I'm getting cooked. <laughs> she, got cooked. she got ninth place. Laughable sports moment. She got ninth place. She was doing TikTok saying, I'm back, bitches. I'm this. I'm that. Everybody in it hyping her up. The Olympics are races. If she was there, she did this, this, and that. Not knowing because this is how you know a lot of motherfuckers didn't know shit about sports. The Jamaicans, literally a week after she ran that fast ass 10 7 2 at the trials, they was running 10 6s. Shelly Ann Fraser Price running 10 6s. I didn't even know about Elena until she dusted ass on the Olympic stage. And then when I went to the Prefontaine Classic, which that just race that just passed, she busted 10 5 4. So, really thinking about it, if we're looking at season's best, personal best, if we're just going to put these guys' personal best up on the board, Shakari Richardson was only really possibility to get third place from her fastest that she's ran this year. Because Elaine Thompson, I believe I'm saying her name right, from Jamaica, she was first place in the 100 and 200 at the Olympics, and she ran like a 10-6, low 10-6, or maybe possibly a 10-5 high. Shakari wasn't beating that, and Shakari got last place. And the internet went off. You guys just want to tear down a woman. And I didn't want to put this guy's tweets in there. Because I don't I don't want to seem like I'm always like picking at somebody. But some of these rappers just make it easy to, to, to discuss them. And this isn't necessarily even to go at his tweets. And I'm talking about Tory Lanez. But this is to me the overall consensus of the internet and how they tried to frame people's joking about Shakari Richardson. So this is the first tweet. It'd be cool to support niggas when they got a video with Kanye, though. All I'm saying is don't choose to be supportive to the people you champion when it's convenient. Be real and supportive to people through their ups and downs. He also said, Shikari ran a great race, not because she won or lost, because through all the adversity, she got up and ran again and gave it her all. She went through a lot within the last month. Niggas be on the app preaching all this uplift our queens, then tear them down. First of all, wrong messenger. Allegedly. We don't know yet. But I keep reiterating, this is sports, bro. This, is, this isn't real life. This isn't making fun of people in their day-to-day -day life. This is sports. And that's why I made a comment in the beginning of it. thing is that's why female sports will never be as successful as men's sports. That's what my belief, my opinion. Because you can't criticize women's sports. I can't laugh at women's sports without being talked shit about on the internet. She got last place, bro. She was talking shit and got last place. It's funny. The jokes write themselves. And people who like sports know that while we're joking, we know next race she could come out and get first. She possibly might get first. She might win. No different. LeBron has a bad game. I mean, I'll skip base is a bad example because he's showing LeBron. Don't matter what LeBron does. But for example, LeBron stuffs it up, does shitty. We're going to joke. You know what's going to happen? LeBron probably going to go out the next game. We know he's going to. We know he got the potential to ball. He going to ball. The Falcons. The Falcons are still the butt of a joke for years since they got. They was up on the Patriots 28 to 0. Turn around, second half, and lost. They still get ragged on. They still get joked on. The Warriors 3 1. Still get joked on. Still get ragged on. Kwame Brown, the face of bust, still 20 years later, still get dragged for being a bust. But the consensus of male sports is that's just a part of the game. But for women, you can't even have an opinion about the shit. 
When Gab, not Gabby Douglas, what's her name? When Simone Biles dropped out of the Olympics, right? Mental health reasons, whatever, right? Cool, whatever. She went to do mental health shit, whatever. And people wanted to criticize her. People start pulling, oh, y'all want to just talk shit about da 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 da. Now, it's different when you just say certain little things, because I brought up things about it too. My point, my only point really was kind of what the point I'm making right now is don't try to defend and protect and coddle, because if that was Tom Brady, when he was down 28 0 to the Falcons, and Tom Brady came back and said, you know what? That 28 0 fucked my head up, coach. Take me out. My mental health fucked up. They would have killed Tom Brady. They would have killed Tom Brady. Come on. That's just my point. Like, bro, we can't enjoy female sports, the rise or the fall, because in sports you enjoy the rise and the fall. You laugh at the losers, you appraise the winners. That's how sports goes. I'm sorry. That's how sports goes. And especially a shit talker. There was black girls coming out saying that, hey, guys, don't boycott the Olympics because this and that. And Shakur was biting back at them for saying that. Shakari Richardson liked the tweet that painted Shelly and Fraser Price, who got second uh, in the race, to say she looked like Lil Wayne. She's talking shit. So if she can talk shit while losing, why can't we talk shit about her losing? Why not? I don't get why we can't talk shit. It's funny. Ain't nobody telling her to go kill herself. Ain't nobody hoping she's going to a deep, dark depression. It's no different than Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Yapping yeah, at press conference. I'm going to knock your bleeding bloody head off, da, 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 whatever he's talking about. And then you get knocked out. We're going to laugh. But when that next fight come up and he suit back up, we forget about the last I got knocked out because we know he got the potential to win this fight. Just like I would feel she got the potential to win her next race. Allison Felix, the GOAT of women's track, as far as medal count goes, Literally ran in the same pre-Fontaine meet, the 200-meter dash. Now, she's a little bit older, but she got last place. And nobody joked on her. You know why? Because Allison Fields ain't out here yapping. If you're a sports person and you're out here yapping, you better be out there performing. Or, in the sports world, you're going to get joked on. You're going to get ragged on. That's the art, and that is the, the, the thing of sports. We have winners and losers, and a lot of times the losers get laughed at. Don't get on Twitter telling me, but she still would have beat you. Duh, I'm not a fucking track runner. I can sit up here and critique LeBron James all day, but I ain't never going to be able to dunk a basketball. That's just what sports is. And whenever you coddle women's sports when we're critiquing or laughing or whatever, you, I, you know, I don't want to watch this shit. If I can't praise the winner and laugh at the loser, I don't want to watch this shit. I don't want to. When I'm watching football, and let's say I'm going for the Texans, and they whoop, whoop let's say they whoop the Cowboys' ass, and I'm up, I'm uplifting the Texans. Touchdown! We got this, this, that. I'm saying, fuck the Cowboys. They shit. They trash. That's sports. We can do that. Now, if, I, if every time I said that a team was trash and everybody on social media saying, you can't talk about them. Y'all always trying to uplift it to be little. Dog, no, shut up. This is a different arena. Take that shit over there to the social justice shit. Now, I ain't saying nothing wrong with social justice, but take that shit over there. Take that shit to where the arena where it's, where, where it's held in high regard. You need to have sympathy for people in social justice. When you talk about helping the homeless people, like we're not going to make fun of homeless people. But we talking about sports, and you get dead last. And it's, to, it's not totally to Shikari's detriment. Because a lot of this shit is really fan inflicted. Everybody was hyping up. Oh, she about to prove, she about to prove, she about to touch the Jamaicans. Da, da. No, Jamaican people was having a field day with her ass. They said they were smoking that Shikari pack in Jamaica the night that she got dusted. But can't criticize can't critique, can't laugh at, can't do none of that because I don't know. She's a woman, a black woman at that. If that was a little white girl, and I hate to bring race to it, but that's just the fact. If that was a little white girl who would say that she was a fast hunter runner and she got kicked out for smoking, no sympathy for her. If there was a little white girl who was talking all that shit, got out there against Jamaicans, got her ass dusted, no, she would get viciously attacked on social media. Viciously. But 
this would happen when you keep letting certain people control the conversation. That's where the world tends to go to. So I just want to touch on this subject real quick because, you know, it's an ongoing. These guys need to kiss and make up, honestly. I ain't going to lie to you. Because they're, just, they're both such great artists, and the storyline is at this point is just really dry. They just need to kiss and make up. So yesterday Kanye leaked Drake's address. I blurred out the address. But the address was always on the internet. Even before Kanye posted the address was always on the internet. But Kanye posted this, which is very, to, for, to be like on a, on a person level, very in, irresponsible, very dangerous. Because a lot of people might not know that Drake's address was already on the internet. But the fact that a guy with that type of influence, the, a guy that knows every time he posts that the post is going to go viral for him to post the address of where Drake lives, not knowing the crazies that might try to, to harm Drake or the crazies that will now be posted outside of, outside of his home, the crazies that could try to infiltrate his home while his child is there. For Kanye to do this because of this petty back and forth rap shit, because every time Kanye, Kanye hates Drake because Drake is successful. And Drake is, he's more, he's more successful than Kanye. He might not be as influential, as impactful, seen in that artistic realm. But as far as numbers and shit like that, he's more successful than Kanye. Not by a lot. I mean, Kanye is still like legendary superstar. But in terms of guys been on a run, you can only put Drake in a category of people like Jay-Z, right? And you can say Kanye is in that thing. But when we talk about goats of goats of goats, Drake is in that category. I don't even know. Maybe I'm shitting on Kanye a little too much. Kanye is in that category too, but Drake is ahead of him, right? Well, you got to compare him. You got to take something down a notch. Drake is ahead of Kanye in the talk of go to goats, in my opinion. I don't care who influenced who. I don't care about none of people. But, but Kanye influenced him, so how can he be higher than Kanye? He, that don't matter. You can pass up your influence. You don't. You can always pass up your influence. Look at LeBron. He passed up. I don't care what you say. He passed up Mike as far as the skill. The dominance, I mean, he ain't winning the championship. I don't say dominance as far as championships. He ain't winning the fucking championships. He only won three. But that's my GOAT. That's my GOAT. So, and it all just stemmed from the betrayal lyrics on Trippy Red's album. This is great for Trippy Red, by the way. This is great for Trippy Red. People are tuned. They're listening to Tribute. They're listening to Tribute. I listen to that betrayal song. I didn't even listen to Tribute's part. I fast forward as soon as I hear like any kind of like, yeah, uh, the boy. Any like Drake type of little ad lib. That's where I went started too. They're saying his album's projected seventy thousand. I can guarantee you a bunch of them sales from that betrayal song. I can guarantee it. But anyways, it all stems from that. Kanye is a petty guy. He's too. He, he gives, he, like, him and Trump have that same energy. Like, they're so successful, and they're so on another level of fame, but anybody who says, it could be the smallest person says anything derogatorily, derogatory towards them, they just take it to a whole nother level. That's that ego. Kanye got that ego. That's ego. Maybe that's why he's so great, but that ego could get you fucked up. Because sharing people's addresses even though it's already public, that's on another level of ego. So people were further breaking down this cryptic text message that they say, Drake got added into a text thread with Pusha T and da, da, da. And they put like the Joker, the new Joker. And it said, I've been messed with by nerd ass jocks like you for my whole life. Then there was a thing at the bottom saying you'll never recover. So they, People on the internet have been scouring and making up conspiracy theories, and this is one of the conspiracy theories. So, also relevant to why Kanye said you will never recover. Lil Baby and Gunna feature Drake on the record Never Recover, where Drake mentions the watch from Virgil followed by subliminals. This is the, the lyrics of Never Never Recover. is like, what, they came out like, what, 2018? Virgil just shoved me up a whole different colorway. Please don't be stupid. It's Baby and Gunna, and Baby, he want her. So I just swung her. Next time in Dallas, I look for another. You niggas fell off it. You'll never recover. Now, I don't know if that's a diss towards Kanye, but Drake has been throwing a lot of subliminals in his songs towards Kanye. And if you say Kanye fell off, you can say Kanye fell off. I still think Kanye makes good music. You can say he fell off and he'll never recover to be that same graduation Kanye that My Beautiful Dark Twisted, uh, my, dis my Dark 
beautiful, whatever, fantasy Kanye. He might never be that, but Kanye is still Kanye. He's a billionaire now, right? He's, in other, he's great in other avenues. My main thing about this, as a fan of Drake, please do not allow someone like Kanye West, who you've already been throwing disses at, it's already been subliminal, please do not go in the lab and convert all of your verses, all of your songs, all of your beats to be centered around an, an, a continuance of the beef with Kanye West. Because I feel like that's what he did with Scorpion. Oh, shit, now I got to throw in some disses at Pusha T now because I got to reconstruct a couple of things. Don't make that the focus. Go in the lab. I don't need revenge, Drake. I need nothing was the same, Drake. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't shots in those albums, but I'm saying I need something cohesive like that. I need views, Drake. And a lot of y'all fucked up with them views takes. Views is probably one of Drake's top three albums they dropped. Might be better than Take Care if you really go back and listen to it. But I digress. Go back and give me, I don't even care to have the Take Care, Drake. Give me the nothing was the same, Drake. Give me the views, Drake. Give me that Drake on this album. I don't want the petty uh, Kanye push it. I don't give a fuck about that no more. Especially the push it. She's like, what is the point? You're giving him life at this point. Let's be honest. He's giving push it life. As far as the music thing. Let's just be honest. But let me know you guys see the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel every single time that I post. I really appreciate you for watching. If you want to subscribe, subscribe right now to the YouTube channel. Uh, SoundCloud, Spotify, and iTunes. Search up the D-Friend Show. And you can find the show over there as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Mention with D-Friend. Peace.